good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. So I just spent the past week uh, at the National Speakers Conference in Salt Lake City. It's one of a few opportunities that I have to meet legislators from both parties, uh, every state, all around the country. And the interesting thing is that it's a bipartisan group. It's Republicans and Democrats. And we have an opportunity during the course of the conference to do speaker-only sessions, where we talk about what's happening in our chambers, where do we see the future going, how do we focus on making sure that each of our respective states is the strongest it can be. And it's interesting because when we had our discussion, every state, Republican trifecta, Democrat trifecta, and on top of it, the states that are uh, divided government, they all had one thing in common, and that's an unprecedented level of anger and vitriol from special interests, and frankly, sometimes from members, uh, on both sides of the aisle. In Democrat states, they talked about that problem. In Republican states, they talked about that problem. Now, we see it in Wisconsin that we have now been the subject of unprecedented lawsuits uh, that are filed against the legislature. We see that we are now the subject of unprecedented attack ads focused by out-of-state special interest groups who we have no idea who's funding them. It's all secret dark money in an attempt to influence the process. Well, I had some time as I thought about things over the course of the past week and the past weekend to say, after discussing this with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, how do we do something different? How do we try to make it so that the anger and the vitriol, at least in one place at one time, has the ability to take it down a tone? And I now see what the potential looks like if we have an, an unbiased uh, process versus a biased process in how we conduct business in Wisconsin. I am still hopeful uh, that as we go through the process that Justice uh, Protosiewicz will have the opportunity to recuse herself on a case that she's already predecided. right? That is one of the things that this argument began with, but it's really not ending with. So every week, uh, I'm sure like many legislators, I get thousands of emails. I probably get more than the average legislator. And I try to read the ones especially from my own district. If you live in California or New York City, which seems to be a lot of the focus right now because that's where the Democratic Party is coming from, I don't really care what people in other states think. But I do care a lot about what people in Wisconsin think, and especially the people who live in my district. And I think this is the time where we have the ability to say, what do we do that's different? What do we do that's not going to be the same as we've come to expect in our state? So after thinking about it quite a bit, um, I think it makes sense for us to save the money that the taxpayers would have to waste on lawsuits. I think it makes sense to save the money that the Democrats are raising from out-of-state special interests to attack Republicans and use it for something that's better and more productive for our society, perhaps bringing down the temperature. So today, uh, Republicans are announcing that we are introducing Iowa-style nonpartisan redistricting today. We are going to directly refer that to the floor through a special order. It'll come up for a vote on Thursday. Now, we have a memo from Ledge Council which shows that the bill that we are drafting is as close as is humanly possible to using the Iowa model. Uh, our Constitution is slightly different, so it can't be exactly the same. But it is as close as is possible by super smart lawyers. Uh, what we will do by adopting this bill today, hopefully, it means that we will take all of the money that has been wasted by the liberal interests suing us over the maps, and instead we get to say we don't need to waste those taxpayer dollars because we can adopt a process that has been used flawlessly in Iowa. We've had it five times in Iowa. Every time the legislature has actually found uh, a way to get consensus and had a bill signed by the governor. Under this process, uh, the legislature will still draw the maps, but it'll be the nonpartisan professional staff, which you ask any legislator in both parties, would say uh, do an exemplary job and really truly are nonpartisan. They will bring the bill forward to the legislature. It will be adopted by the legislature and signed by the governor, and this will all take effect for the 2024 election cycle. Uh, so it's not something in the future. It's something that all of us can rally around. I have heard for decades my Democratic colleagues say, just give us a vote. Bring the bill forward. Let us have the gold standard Iowa-style redistricting. 
Well, that's what we're going to do on Thursday.